Mr. Marston, I've been hearing about your plans. Have you, Miss McFarland? Yes, from Lee Johnson, to settle here and build a life for yourself. I'm afraid those aren't my plans. See, I already have a life. Well, I had one, and I'm trying to reclaim it. Or maybe what you could say is that I had two, and I'm trying to end one of them so the other can survive. You do so love to talk in riddles, Mr. Marston. Do you do that, I wonder, as a substitute for having anything interesting to say? Probably, Miss McFarland. Oh, call me Bonnie, you fool. Call me Bonnie. Miss McFarland, I'm married. I have a son. I had a daughter, but she died. Years before that, I rode in a gang. We robbed banks, trains, held people ransom. We killed people we didn't like. Bill Williamson was in that gang. Now, if I don't capture my former brother in arms, great harm will befall my family. Now, I don't suppose any of this is very interesting to you, but I hope it explains why I wasn't so eager to talk about it. No, I do understand. I had no idea. You poor man. Even in this new country, memories don't really fade. My father was an illiterate Scot born on the boat into New York. He never saw his homeland, but to hear him talk about it, you'd imagine he only ever ate haggis and wore a kilt. And he hated the English for what they had done to his great-grandparents that he'd never met. People don't forget. Nothing gets forgiven. That's true. Especially when it comes to money. And you know, even now, after all his labors, my father's debts are still terrible. I worry every day about us losing the ranch. It would kill him. My father died when I was eight years old. His eyes were, well, let's just say he was blinded in a bar fight south of Chicago. My mother died during childbirth. She was a prostitute, and he was her... Well, I, I don't know what he was. So I was sent off to an orphanage and ran away and fell in with a gang. My word. What a difficult life you've lived. Uh, the leader of the gang taught me how to read, taught me how to see all that was good in the world. He was a great man, in a way. But you killed people. Sure. And I've suffered for it. And that's the life I left, or tried to leave. Ah, said too much, Bonnie. I'm an uneducated killer, sent here to do all I can do well. Kill a man in cold blood so that another man may do his part to cut crime in an area, and a rich man can be elected governor on the back of these promises. Civilization is a truly beautiful thing, Mr. Marston. <laughs> Listen, can you help me? Well, I can try. What do you need, money? No, nothing so complicated. I need an extra hand to take out the herd to pasture. <laughs> sure. Point me in the right direction. all that back there. It must have been hard for you. I hope you understand now why I've been playing my cards somewhat close to my chest. I didn't know you had a wife and child. Then again, I don't think I ever asked. They're, they're lucky to have a man like you. I ain't so sure about that, but thank you. Yeah! Good to see you, Miss McFarland. You should learn to ride before you learn to herd. All right, let's see if you can herd cows as well as you can charm humanity. That's it. Nice job, Mr. Martin. He's got
just showing off now. Keep going, Mr. Good. Marston. Now we need to move this entire herd out to the far pasture for grazing. Yeah. Move it up. Mr. Marston. Either that, or you were a cow in a past life. Thank you, Miss McFarland. I'll see you later. I have work to do back at the ranch. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. You need help? Mister, you alive? Oh, fuck, fuck. God damn it. Good heavens. Excuse me? I said, no, I'm not okay. Do I look like I'm okay? You look pretty good for a corpse. Oh, praise be. <laughs> Move up, mister. Time to get you to a doctor or an undertaker. Whichever you need once we get to town. Uh, St. Peter, open up them pearly gates. I'm coming home. <laughs> Come on, mister. Come on. <laughs> hey, sir. I'm bleeding like a badly butchered hog. You'll be fine. Just focus. You better take the reins. I don't think I'm strong enough. I'm finished. Done for. Just sit up straight, will you? Head for Armadillo, friend. Oh, he's out. I implore you to please stay on the road! We must hurry! What is your name, friend? John Marston. Oh, good God! Out of the frying pan into the fire! Excuse How me? How many outlaws can a man encounter in one day? My God! They've come back to finish me off! So weak. It looks like they're shooting at nothing. Stop moaning, old man. You'll be fine. Just sit and save some of your breath for breathing. It looks like you got them all. Now get me to a doctor. What the hell happened to you? Bandits, hoodlums, the scoundrels robbed me blind and left me to die. I can see that. Once again, a victim of my own success. They see a man in a wheelchair soon if this happens. Do you know who they were? No idea. I'm not the kind of man who has enemies. You do now. I give so much and still they take. Please, there's no time to lose. We live in an uncivilized and graceless world, friend. Our maker is a funny sense of humor sometimes. Still, at least I met you. I just won't give up. Master! Damn bandits! I 
put up quite a fight, though. I can tell you. Yeah, it looks like they've really got the mess. They're fleeing. He must be too close to town, Barnum. Dad, I embrace you. For Christ's sake, man, you're gonna be fine. We're really there. We're here. Stay with me. Oh, where the devil are we? Armadillo. We made it safe, you'll be happy to know. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're a gentleman and a, a true man of honor. Coming from you, I doubt that means much, but I appreciate the civility. I owe you, sir. And I always pay my debts. Uh, Jesus. But if I die, I'm sorry for it. If not, I'll be your man for... for... Let's get you fixed up first. Then we'll decide what you're my man for. Ah, since you're here, you want to make yourself useful? Not particularly. Listen, son, I know you got a mission. But right now, I need another gun. Why? What's happening? We've had this problem for months with this group of bandits who are getting drunk and murdering settlers. Last night, they went to a big place up near Ridgewood. They burnt the place down, killed the men, burning most of them alive, and raped the women. Women folk then got their throats slit. One of them survived and walked in here this morning. Anyway. We got a posse gathering up near Ridgewood. Will you ride with us? All right. Thank you, John Marston. It's gonna be a bloody job. Huh. I don't think I know any other kind, sir. Hey, wait up! Let's go. Stay together. Marston, I hear you caught up with Mr. Wes Dickens. I did. For a man who claimed to have found a remedy to all ailments, he was in pretty bad shape. His tonic has helped a great many people. It's a medical breakthrough from the East, the result of years of research. If only it could cure him of his diarrhea of the mouth. I wouldn't be so dismissive of science if I was you. Times are changing fast. He's no more a scientist than I am a priest. But people can spend their hard-earned money however they please. He's certainly a character, that Wes Dickens. I can't understand a goddamn word he said. A more flannel-mouthed bunko artist I've never met. Look, vultures. I see him. Marston, you and Eli go check it out. Yeah. Man, this don't look too good. Somebody was so busy killing people, they went and dropped their gun.
Marlins, John. They're holding on, but that ranch is in trouble. But we dealt with the rustler problem. For now, yeah. But that ain't enough. They got greater forces working against them. Drew's a rancher, not a businessman. Railroad, motor cars, telephone. Open in a world of new opportunities, apparently. Try telling that to a farmer with no head for business. Or a blacksmith whose customers can buy tools for half the price out of a Spalding's catalog. Giving a man too many options will make him unhappy. Taking too many away will force him to do things he shouldn't. It's wrong to assume change is always good. What happened to that girl you was riding herd on a while back, Eli? Hey, Marshal, see those vultures? Might just be a dead critter. Marston, take a look. Eli, you too. Ain't no survivors here, Marshal. Man, this don't look too good. Somebody was so busy killing people, they went and dropped their guns. talk out of you boys. We need to keep our wits about us. Man, this don't look too good. Somebody was so busy killing people, they went and dropped their guns. Still smoking. Those scumbags must still be around. Come on! Come on, 
let's ride. They kinda got too far. Sons of bitches! Leave me one front of gang of outlaws! Marston. Yeah, but not like that. It wasn't our way. At least it wasn't my way. Killing and thieving's never right, boy. No matter how you dress it up. Unless it's ordered by a court of law, you mean? This is too quiet. I got a bad feeling about this. All right, boys. Let's have a look around. Nobody's in the shed. Let's go. No one here. that door down. The rest of you, get your guns ready. Holy sweet mother of mercy. Please, please don't shoot me. Some bandits came by and took us hostage. They're holed up in the farmhouse. Some of my family is being kept hostage inside. <laughs> All right, boys, we need to get into that house right now. Are you kidding me? Waiting for you in the shed out back. Make a run for it when it's clear. This way! <laughs> You're gonna be all right. Head for the shed in the back as soon as it looks clear. They did unspeakable things to me. Look like that's all of them. Let's see how the hostages are doing. Of that bunch gets fifty dollars. 
It ain't about the money, Marshal. These are people's lives. People's homes. Let's go. Get on your horse, boy. All right, let's find those bastards. Let's go. Do you think they might be headed for Fort Mercer, Marshal? Come on, back in the saddle, boy. Come on. What? Williamson's men? Maybe. All this sure looks like their handiwork. Makes sense if they cut this road. Come on, Marshal. This might be our chance. What's your beef with Williamson anyway, Marshal? Let's just say he's the currency in a complicated transaction. What the hell are you talking about? Some people I have the displeasure of knowing want him dead. Why does that involve you? We used to run in a gang together. It was once like family. If this is how you treat your family, I'd hate to see what you do to your enemies. That was a lifetime ago. And bearing in mind, he's left me for dead. Is that somebody on the cliff? You just walk away now, John. I didn't kill you before, but I sure as shit will now. Get yourself down here, Bill. You know you ain't man enough to stop me. <laughs> you know I don't want to kill you, but I will. You always did have a high opinion of yourself, John. <laughs> Dutch always said you were an arrogant son of a bitch. I guess he was about right. Get him, boys! Everybody, take cover! In that shed! Keep together and stay in here. This is the best cover we got. Stop shooting at me! Here. There's something that you're still breathing. Come here, boy. Come on, Missy. Give. Oh. Norman Deke. Fuck. Nice to see you again, buddy. Thanks for your help, John. Norman here is going to help us get to Bill. Ain't you, Norman? Thank you, Mr. Deke. Mighty kind. Fuck you. Hog time. Let's get him to jail. 